Hi everyone, and welcome to this morning's Lockdown Lookup. Well, we just had Easter, and one of the first things that we did as a family on Easter morning was to have coffee, hot cross buns, and then to send our girls out on an Easter egg hunt. So we gave them each a little basket and told them to fill those baskets with as many eggs as they could find. They came back, and it was clear that all they wanted to do was to dive into the chocolate and devour as much as they could in record time. We had to explain to them that although they could have one Easter egg now, they'd have to wait until after lunch before they could have any more. They were clearly disappointed. And you could see them resting with this thought. Do we disobey daddy and mommy or do we practice something of critical importance? Self-control. Now as adults, we all have our own chocolates. Things that strongly appeal to our desires. Things that we find difficult to say no to. Some of those things are bad things. Some of them are good things. But the problem is when we turn those things into idols. When we, when we turn to those things for life and joy and meaning and satisfaction apart from God. Sometimes we're strong and resolute in our fight against temptation. But if you're anything like me, there are certain things that are just really difficult to say no to and certain times where it's harder to say no than others. So how do we grow in saying no? How do we grow in practicing self-control? Maybe some of you are stuck. Maybe some of you are stuck in addictive patterns and sin. And no matter how hard you try, you just can't get out and you just keep going back to those things. Maybe you're frustrated or disappointed with yourself. Maybe you've even just given up hope completely. But I want to say to you this morning that I I do believe that there is hope. And I know that because we've just had Easter, we were reminded that Jesus was raised to life from the dead. That he was victorious over sin, over death, over Satan. And if you're a Christian this morning, a Christ follower, and the Holy Spirit lives in you, then you can be guaranteed that that spirit, the Holy Spirit, has a function of really transforming you into Christ-likeness over the course of your lifetime. There's a great promise in the Bible that says when God starts a good work in you, he will carry it on to completion. In other words, you can be guaranteed that the Holy Spirit is making you more and more like Jesus each day. And although we'll only be perfectly like Christ Uh, when we get to, to heaven one day, I do believe that in the meantime, we can grow in resisting temptation and in self-control. Uh, there's a classic kind of example of self-control in the Bible. Uh, Jesus in Luke chapter four went into the wilderness and he was tempted by Satan three times. And each time uh, he managed to say no and to practice self-control. Now you might say to me, Dave, that's a terrible example. Like Jesus was God. I mean, it was easy for him to say no. It was easy for him to practice self-control. But I want to remind you that although Jesus was fully God, he was also fully man. And the Bible says that he experienced all the temptations that we experienced. Jesus is under no illusion that it is difficult to say no in the face of great temptation. And so he, he can relate to us in our temptations. I love Jesus' response to Satan's first temptation. Why don't you read with me uh, in Luke chapter 4 from the second part of verse 2. It says, He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell the stone to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone. How is it that Jesus was able to say no to such a powerful temptation? He's starving, he's physically exhausted, and he has the power to turn those stones into bread. And yet, he says no. There's an old Scottish theologian by the name of Thomas Chalmers, who once said that the only way to displace an old affection is to replace it with a new and more powerful one. So for example, if there's a car that I own that I really, really love, and and I just can't stop thinking about it, the only way for me to get over that car 
is for me to replace it with a new and better one. And you see, in the face of this temptation, the greater desire, the thing that captivated Jesus more than physical bread, was his relationship with his heavenly Father. There was so much intimacy and joy and love in that relationship that it was easy in one sense for Jesus to say no to those temptations because he had everything that he needed in his relationship with God. It's amazing for me that right before Jesus goes into the wilderness, in Luke chapter 3, we see God the Father affirming Jesus his Son in such a powerful way. He says, This is my Son, whom I love and with whom I am well pleased. Imagine hearing those words. You're my Son. I love you. I'm proud of you. And as you're about to go into the season of wilderness and temptation, those words are ringing in your ears. That's the kind of intimate relationship that Jesus had with his father. And that for me was the secret, the power to being able to say no. And I believe that each of us, if we're God's children, can hear him with confidence today saying to us, you're my child. I love you deeply and I'm so proud of you. And I believe that that for us will be the power to say no to temptation and to practice self-control. It'll be when we are in such intimate, joyful, loving relationship with our Father that it's a new and powerful affection, an affection, a desire that, that captivates us. And that replaces those old affections that have taken up so much of our time and energy. You want to grow in self-control? Invest in your relationship with God. Learn to enjoy Him. Learn to taste and see that He is good. So that those desires for those other chocolates will be replaced with a far greater one. An intimate relationship with the God of Heaven. God bless you. I hope that you have a fantastic day.